Welcome to the VIRS flood map teletraining session. My name is Jarrell Torres and I work at the Cooperative Institute for Research in the Atmosphere, CIRA. I will lead the teletraining session today, so let's get started. Here is a list of learning objectives for the teletraining session. We will discuss and understand key aspects of the product's algorithm, resolutions, and latency. We will also be able to interpret the product and become aware of its strengths and limitations. The teletraining session will also help users locate and use the product in AWIPS and online, while also identifying other training and resource materials online. So what is the VIRS flood map product? The product is comprised of daytime imagery from the visible infrared imaging radiometer suite VIRS instrument that is on board three satellites, the SUMI National Polar Orbiting Partnership, SMPP, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration 20, NOAA 20, and NOAA 21. The extent of flooding is calculated and displayed as a percentage, indicating the extent of water within each 375 meter pixel that exceeds what is typically there. It is vital for users to know the spatial distribution of flood water, which can aid in determining the severity of a flood event and guide mitigation efforts. As we know, the effects of flooding are vast and can lead to damage to property and infrastructure, environmental impacts, and public health hazards. Can you tell me more about the product itself? Yes, the VIRS flood map algorithm detects water, land, cloud, and snow and ice cover, removes cloud and terrain shadows from water pixels, and retrieves flood water fractions using VIRS imagery bands. The flood water is determined by comparing the detected water against a water reference map that is derived from MODIS Global 250 meter water mask and water layer in the 30 meter national land cover dataset. The temporal resolution over CONUS is two to four daytime overpasses at approximately 1330 local time. If you're an Alaska user, you'll have more frequent coverage from the polar orbiters. The product's spatial resolution is at 375 meters. Lastly, the data latency of the product over CONUS is one hour via direct broadcast or DB and approximately 90 minutes to 180 minutes via LDM. For Alaska users, the DB data latency is approximately 30 minutes. Now in AWIPS, how does one interpret the product? Images from the VIRS flood map consists of an array of colors to differentiate between. The flood water fraction percentage from 0 to 100% displays in green to yellow to red colors. See number 10 on the left side of the slide. The different scene types are number 2 through 9, where bare land is seen in brown, vegetation is seen in dark green, snow cover in white, river and lake ice cover in cyan, cloud cover in gray, super snow ice water or mixed ice and water is in purple cloud and terrain shadows in dark gray, and water in blue. Now, if a pixel does not have data, the pixel color is black, denoted as number one, no retrieval. Examples of remnant ice over the Missouri River in South Dakota, left, and inundation observed in Central California, right, can be seen with the corresponding AWIPS color bar. Note, users can sample the data in AWIPS that will help indicate what each color represents. We will now transition to the applications of the VIRS flood map. The primary application is flood mapping, where the product detects flood water over land, snow, and ice surfaces. Note flooding may occur due to prolonged or heavy rainfall, ice jams, snow melt, storm surge, structural failures, and other causes. As I mentioned before, the flood, the flood water fraction is calculated and displayed as a percentage of each 375 meter pixel, ranging from 0 to 100%, green to red colors. An example of ice jam flooding, see image on the top right, occurred along the Yukon River in Alaska in May 2023. Notice the river ice extent and corresponding inundation located south of the Yukon. Additionally, snow melt can also be observed by the product, which can assist in flood forecasting applications. An example of wet snow that is, a, that is observed as flooded in the product can be seen over eastern North Dakota in April 2023. 
the corresponding visible imagery shows the snow aerial extent present in this area, referred to the blue ellipses. Conversely, in western Minnesota, there are areas of inundation, likely due to moist or water-covered fields, seen by the flood product, where significantly less snow cover is observed in the visible band. Now with every product's applications, there are also limitations that users should be aware of. The Veers flood map is a daytime only application as the product uses Veers imagery bands that detect reflected visible solar radiation. Cloud cover can obscure flood water at the surface and make spatial analysis more difficult. Due to similar spectral properties, flood water can be challenging to distinguish from cloud and terrain shadows. An example of cloud and cloud shadow obscuration of an inundated area in Florida can be seen in the top right. Also, veer swaths do not align with the eight U.S. regional sectors seen in AWIPS. Product, product images may only be available for a portion of a region, referred to the animation in the bottom right. Lastly, the temporal resolution should also be considered, with limited refresh rate over CONUS compared to the northern high latitudes. How do users access the data in AWIPS and online? Note the data is available in AWIPS for both CONUS and Alaska users. In AWIPS, users can click on the satellite tab, scroll down to SMPP and NOAA 20, then to VIRS flood map, and decide which regional sector they want to access. Note in AWIPS, there are eight regional sectors to choose from, seven CONUS sectors and one Alaska sector. Now online, users can access near real-time data via Real Earth, GINA website, a NOAA satellite proving ground global flood products archive website, and via NOAA class web links. Now, before we conclude the session, here's a quick case exercise of the Northeast US flooding event that occurred in early July, 2023. The state of Vermont experienced significant flooding, over 9 plus inches in some areas. Now, based on the Veers flood map observations on July 11th, which town experienced the least amount of flooding? That is, the lowest flood water fraction percentage in or near the town. I will pause for a moment so you can analyze the data. Any guesses? The correct answer is C. At this timestamp, the town of Stowe, Vermont, didn't observe any flooding compared to the other towns. Now this is the last slide of the teletraining session and contains resources and links on the Veers flood map product. There are links that users can access the Veers flood map quick guide, another guide that highlights the Veers ABI and joint ABI plus VIRS versions of the flood product and the VIRS flood map product algorithm theoretical basis document or ATBD. Note the ABI and joint flood products are being operationalized in the future. Thanks for attending the teletraining session and my contact information can be seen at the bottom of the slide. If you have any questions, please ask away. Thank you.